And we are back. Hello, guys. Last hey, time guys. we left off, we had just finished Kerwan. 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 <laughs> and we have been tasked by the one and only. Infiltrating this facility will require advanced equipment. We should visit Wilgard to acquire it. Wilgard? What? Who's Wilgard? Why would it. Okay. Apparently we have to get advanced stuff for Nebula G34, which was a mission we were given by Quark. Um, but we also have Aradia, which is Skid McMarks and whatnot. So what do we want to do? Skid McMarks or the mission that needs... Oh no, we're required to rescue Skid McMarks first, so that's, that's that. We're probably gonna need the hoverboard then at some point. Probably. That was a bit stuttery. I don't remember that part being on Nebula G34, although I'm not sure. Oh yeah, that is where the hoverboard race it is. I see the preview you now. Well, we know where we're going next. Probably should have done this before we started recording, but COCOMs if you want to stop and then restart your stream so that you're synced up as close as possible again. Is that skid big marks up ahead? All right, we're landing. Oh, someone help me! Is... Hmm, that was weird. So let's see if this battle armor actually keeps you from keeps you from taking as much damage now. Oh, Hopefully it does. So something I've started to notice is that bolts attract you from a pretty far distance. They do. It wasn't like that in the first game. I didn't think so. You had to get upgrades for them to attract from that far away. Which I don't think appeared until the second game anyway. So basically skip the first game, just play the second one. Like everything you've said so far in this commentary has made me not want to play the first game whatsoever and just skip to two. That's yeah, that's about right. I mean, the honestly, first game is a, it's a very, very basic, bare bones game, and a lot of things are improved on and just done a lot better in the later games. Well, at least since this game exists now, the first game really isn't necessary. Mm. Kinda. Anyway, I'm gonna do a quick... Already, like, two minutes into the episode and already gonna do a quick skip forward. I'm gonna do some upgrades and I won't subject the actual video to it. So we will see you in a second. Alright, upgrades done. Got some nice upgrades for the bombs, which make it so that explosions are bigger. And got upgrades for the gun, which means its range is improved, and we have much more ammo, and we get much more bolts from killing things. However, land sharks get flame forward. Yep. Oh, okay, that's water that I should not touch. It's called death water. Quite. It's probably more like tar. Probably. Oh my god, there's so many. Yep. Holy crap. This is why you got the flamethrower. This is exactly why you get the flamethrower. This is why I'm not actually going to be ha have to gonna be kind of conservative with my flamethrower. Because I'm actually running out already. I figured that's probably the trade-off for having such long range, is that you run out of ammo a lot faster. Such long range and power. The ammo is done differently than it was in the first game. Basically, in the first game, the ammo for the Pyrocitor works like it uses up. It has 200 to start with, and it uses up one ammo like every so long. I think it probably used up like five per second or something like that. And yeah. now it looks like you have 20 and it uses up one every few seconds. Huh. Which means if you tap the button rather than holding it, you probably conserve, but you don't get the range. You you wouldn't be able to hold it on 
Actually, stuff. it just kind of looks like I'm just randomly setting things on fire. Because the flame isn't coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and she said, fire! You're Jefferson. also getting hit more often. I, I did take quite a few hits there, yes. Yeah, because it's, it's not up enough to actually block them from getting to you. I feel like this might be a kind of spoiler. Hey, something I'm noticing, the land sharks keep they keep rising up in number as well. Yeah, they there is quite a few of them. No, but I mean the number keeps going up. <laughs> Why is there a card for Angela? She's not even in this game. She might be. We don't know how much this game covers. I mean, I'm gonna assume since they've made a model for her, she's probably in the game. That was not the attack I meant to do, but I'll take it. I need to remember these toolboxes have some, uh, what you call it in it? Ammo? No, the bolts. Oh. Whee! Okay. Oh god, no! What have you done? You know how I said I'm not buying the bot? Uh -huh. Does it make you buy the bot? I'm getting warned at because I haven't bought the bot. Oh, that's oh, right. The shop no. tells you to buy stuff you haven't bought. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, according to AA Gamer, the cards cover the entire series. If they were important to the game they were in, they get a card. Oh, okay. okay, so maybe she's not in the game. found a thing. Hey, a golden bolt! Yep, Yay. that was there in the original. So I wonder if the golden bolt is back where the way back in the last planet where you said there was a gold bolt. Maybe it's there now since again we collected our first one. Might be worth checking after this planet's done. The only one I remember in Kerr 1 was directly under the landing pad where your ship usually comes in. There was like a freeway for the hover cars and you could hover down there uh, and grab it that way. But I'm not sure how that works this time, since, you know, obviously you didn't actually land your ship very well in Kerwan. Rip. So, is there an actual in-game explanation for the, um, uh, for the gold bolt, or are they just kind of there? I mean, besides the fact that they given you, they gave you one. Um... Don't think there's been anything so far. Doesn't seem like there's an in-game explanation now. How about the original game? Nope. Okay. They were entirely hidden gameplay mechanics. So it's just one of those video game things that are there because it's a video game. Got it. Mm-hmm. We did it! Killed all them little shits. It'd be nice if catching them on fire would, you know, deal damage to them over time. That would make sense. Oh, and it's we don't work with sense in this universe. Ratchet and Clank, the chillest dudes I've ever hung out with on no, Ratchet. the planet. Ratchet. Ratchet, you're not even looking at that hoverboard. Be able to get home on your own? Worst part is Spar, I knew you were gonna make the joke and I walked into it anyway. <laughs> what? What joke was it? I missed that. Jackal said, we don't work with sense in this universe, and I said, no, we work with bolts. Oh. Uh, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> Yo, I'm so 90s, brah! Have this hoverboard I signed, brah! Brah! Totally not turning hot, brah. Totally. Now excuse me while I go star in like, three good video games and then make some crappy ones. Excuse you. Four good video games. Excuse you. Uh, I've not played many of the Tony Hawk games, I don't know. No good video games. Excuse you. I was gonna say, that's not true. Like, the Tony Hawk Pro Stater 1 through 4 was pretty good. 1 through 3 was good, 4 was kinda eh. Underground 1 was good, 2 was very bleh. I, I like American Wasteland, although I wouldn't specifically say it's a good game. Welcome to the Ratchet and Clank playthrough, where we occasionally talk about Ratchet and Clank. 
Most of the talking about the game is me talking about how it was in the original game. And me asking about how it was in the original game. Yeah. I found a way to deal with these guys. I just well, gotta well, hit them really, really hard. That, was <laughs> that sounds like something Goku would say. <laughs> That's something Goku did say. Mm -hmm. That's the joke. Actually, I guess it was Piccolo. Yeah. Is that actual? Exactly. No, J Jackal was actually making. Yeah, I, I realized that afterwards. Actual Goku or um, a bridge Goku? That's, uh, that was the bridge reference. Actually, yes. Yeah. It was in the Abridge series. Piccolo originally said it. We could hit them really, them. really hard together. Yeah. I'll be here all week. All right, Popeye. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Yes, the bouncer has always been a broken weapon. Even when they nerfed it, it was still broken. I mean, that generally tends to be the idea when it comes to weapons that bounce around everywhere, is that you can't nerf it. Well, they nerf the damage that it does, and it still does a lot of damage, so... I was gonna say, like, here's the thing, though. When it bounces around like that, even if you nerf the damage, it's probably never gonna be enough that it's not gonna be game-breaking. I think I was just kind of sitting there. Hmm. Not sure why, but I murdered his ass. You're a monster. I am. Quiet and wonderful monster. I. I, I think he may have been stuck. I think he was, yes. But so I was technically putting him out of his misery. <laughs> Burn. Whatever, whatever helps you sleep at night. 